Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you send us help. Cause your mighty hand to spread in our midst and do us good. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Please, you may be seated as you turn your Bible with me. Now let's go to Luke chapter 1. I'll just make a statement and then i connect us uh, to some scriptures in the book of Matthew. Uh, I want to build for 35 minutes before we begin to pray. So I just saw my elder brother here, Apostle Dabs. Uh, <laughs> glory to God. God bless you, sir. All right, Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. I want to read from verse number 5. Just to explain what we mean when we say dimensions. Dimensions. There was in the days, Luke 1, 5. There was in the days of Herod the king of Judea a priest named Zacharias of the cause of a beer, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and their boat were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And they appeared unto him on the right side of the altar, and fear fell upon him. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. For he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zachariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well stricken in years. My emphasis is on the response that the angel gave. Verse 19, And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that standeth in the presence of God, and I am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings and behold thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak unto the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled in their season now listen In the book of 1 Kings, chapter 6, we see the building of the temple of God. Uh, this civil engineering piece 
was a significant project that stands out in the Old Testament. Uh, the building was so significant, it's not just <laughs> putting that building together is not the same as putting an auditorium like this together. The reason is because the building of the temple was done in such a way that it captured human offices, it captured angelic offices, it captured the office of cherubims, it captured the office of God. All of those dimensions were caught up in one building. Are you with me? I, I don't, today is the first night, I don't want to trouble you with so many scriptures. That temple was built to capture different levels in God. It was built to capture different dimensions in God. If we even take a look at the embroidery uh, that was used to beautify the walls, you will know that God gave attention to detail because it was designed to capture dimensions. When I say capture dimensions, most of us uh, may not understand what I'm saying, so I need to give us an example of what I mean. Are you with me? Somewhere in northern Nigeria, while I was preaching the gospel, I met this guy He was caught up by the power of the Holy Spirit and it was obvious that there was a strong demonic entity that had possessed him. At the end of the deliverance session, he decided to open up to tell me at what point he encountered Satan that deeply uh, that led to the situation that I saw during the time of the deliverance. He was in a typical remote environment, hamlet, village where the source of water is the stream that flows around. And unfortunately for him, when he went to take water from the river, he met a spirit. A spirit leaped out of the water and suspended in mid-air and was speaking to him from there. He said, we've been looking for you for a long time. There's a, there's a wisdom we have that we want to give you. Are you interested? He said, yes, I, I want wisdom. Okay. The spirit gave him, there's something we call in Nigeria, alligator pepper. You, you may not know it. You know you don't, you don't eat pepper here, so you don't know what pepper is. But it's a strange kind of, of pepper. That spirit gave him alligator pepper to eat so that he could go high in the spirit before he will unveil the wisdom to him. He was flat in the flesh. So he needed something to move him. So it was alligator pepper that they gave him. When he chewed it, you know it's hot. It changed his level. So because of the change, a transition in levels, he was in a state where he could receive the instructions from that spirit. That was how the spirit revealed to him the, the texture of the realm in which he dwells. Are you with me? The texture of the realm in which he dwells. And if you want to interact with his realm, you need to set up a shrine. A shrine that mirrors his realm. Are you there? If you can mirror his realm and establish it in a physical location, you can bring the dimension of that spirit to this physical location. That was how he became a Sangoma and began to consult for people. Politicians came to visit him because he knows the incantations. Meanwhile, he went and he, he set up the shrine and it mirrored the dimension of that spirit. So when he uses incantation, he can invite the spirit to come into this physical location. And in the eyes of the spirit, he is still in the same realm because the shrine mirrors his dimension. So the shrine, the environment of the shrine can accommodate 
it's reality. You are not with me. Now, there's no way we can do our work this evening if you are not, you are not here. Politicians began to consult him because he became a master of managing that dimension where that spirit was. People were coming to make contact to a spiritual being, but they were contacting that spiritual being in a physical location. Because the dimension of that being was mirrored in that location. So the, so the spirit could be trapped. The essence of the spirit can be trapped in that physical location. That was how the temple was built. So it's not just architecture or civil engineering. It was revelation because the dimension of spiritual entities were supposed to be trapped in a physical location that temple was built to accommodate so human beings can come and minister there just like Zachariah was ministering are you there but because the temple was built to accommodate other dimensions angel Gabriel came into the same location and they were preaching from different dimensions, but they met in the temple because the temple is a collocation of many dimensions trapped into a physical location. Oh, you are not following me. Let me see how I can make it easier for you. So, verse 19. Let me see if I can attempt. Okay. Are you there in 19? And the angel answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. First question I have for you is where was Zachariah? You are not fully. I'm talking about dimensions. Zachariah was where? And Gabriel was talking about a dimension of the presence of God that Zachariah obviously doesn't know. The dimension of the presence of God under which we have ministered in the continent of Africa has brought us where we are. If we are going to make any progress, we need to trap another dimension. Now listen. Are you there? The dimension that Zacharias operated was a dimension where was a dimension where prayers were manufactured, where incense incense was generated. It was a realm where petition ascended. It was a realm where sacrifice was brought. The realm that Gabriel was coming from is a realm where prayers are answered. You know, um, I know you know how to pray, but you don't know how to answer prayer. Gabriel was speaking from the realm where prayers are answered. Zachariah was operating from the realm where prayers were manufactured. So he came from where prayers are answered and he said, it's okay, this prayer point is no longer necessary. That prayer has been heard and thy wife Elizabeth will bear their son. You will now discover that even people that pray may not even have faith to believe in the possibility of the things they pray about. So in the place where prayer is manufactured, some kind of unbelief and all of that litters that place. The place where prayer is answered, there's no unbelief there. It's, 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 it's a realm of a perpetual spiritual reality. 
where, where there, there's, no, there's no shadow of turning, it's, it's a perpetual continuum that is shaped after the order of the eternal now. So in that realm, past and present, future, they merge into one reality. If you are operating where prayers are answered, maybe the, pro the, the, the source of your problem is something that took place when you were 12 years old. In bringing an answer to your condition, this realm can access that 12 years old. That 12 years old time is still available for access and manipulation from the other side. It was when Gabriel came that we knew that Zachariah did not know so much of the realm of God, but he knew how to offer incense. He knew what he was called to do, but he did not understand the maze of the effect of that which he was doing in other dimensions of the presence of God. Many of you trivialize your prayer when you pray in tongues. See, the, the impact of your tongues is not... If only your eyes can open to see the temple into which you pray those prayers, you will see the fire, the fire, the fire that, that is generated on the account of your effort. Your level of spiritual capacity will be determined by how many dimensions you understand. There are many in our midst here that have been brought into the realm of life and you know what it means to be saved. There are also many more in this place that there are few that have entered into the realm where there is government. So, so many people have experienced what it means to be saved. In the same presence of God, there is a place where there is government. Where the impact and the implication of a governing king is felt. And he manipulates everything according to the counsel of his will. You may not have experienced that place. That is why you have the preferences that you sustain. That is why you have the style you sustain but the moment you have access to another dimension where another reality becomes emphasized it's going to shape you further and you even look back at where you were and you will wonder the kind of captivity that you are, you are accepted just because you were limited to one dimension He says, I am Gabriel. There was no need for an introduction until Zachariah doubted his message. And he said, I am Gabriel. And I stand in the presence of God. Are you there? Okay. So that's how the, 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 the temple was built. So many dimensions were captured. So, if you stay long in the temple, you are supposed to bump into angels, bump into cherubims. Just one space. Human beings are colliding with you. Because all those dimensions were captured within the framework of that build. Are you still with me? Okay. Now that you have gotten there, let me add another matter. In the Gospels, an attempt was made to unveil a personality. A personality that is in the center of, is the object of our faith. Our faith as Christians is not in an idea, it's not in a philosophy, it's in a person. 
Are you there? The person of Jesus. In order to establish adequate witness of a matter, because we are dealing with spiritual things, so if Apostle Daps encounters a certain spiritual thing and he brings witness, and I also encounter under different circumstances we are not comparing notes, I encounter the same spiritual reality and I bring witness. Then you that is judging can now say at the mouth of two or three witnesses. Every such issue that was raised, every such encounter that has the same trend can be confirmed to be accurate. Especially if the encounter is healthy in the eyes of scriptures. When the issue of Jesus became the subject matter, two witnesses were not sufficient to unveil his dimensions. That's why we have four gospels. And each gospel brings the picture of a certain dimension of this eternal personality. So, in the book of Matthew, the dimension that Matthew sees is the dimension of him as a king. So, in the book of Matthew, you will find 33 times you will find this phrase, the kingdom of heaven. If you read it in the Greek, it reads the kingdom of the heavens. The heavens there is in plural, and I will explain. After Adam failed, there were two ways God could educate us about his kingdom. One of the ways was to take one of us to heaven for induction. For like four years or five years, and then the person will come back and teach the, the rest. Another way was to send someone from heaven to come here and show us the way of heaven. So God decided to adopt the second approach. He himself came down to the earth to teach us and to show us how heaven operates. Because the idea is this. Are you with me? Stay with me. The idea is this. The earth is supposed to be a mirror image of the heaven. Just like man was created in the image of God. And that's why he asked us to pray that his kingdom should come on the earth the same way it is established in the heavenlies. So that everything that is obtainable in his kingdom can find expression without resistance upon the face of the earth. And the personnel he put on earth through whom he is supposed to bring that kind of order that is depictive of the reign of heaven is man in created in his image. Are you still with me? In the realization of God's kingdom plan to bring his reign into the earth the same way it is experienced in the heavens, man is a critical element in the realization of that plan. I will explain more later. If you go to the book of Mark, the book of Mark starts with prophetic words. The book of Mark reveals that the script concerning Jesus' manifestation was written before he came. That means he did not come to be creative. He came to yield to what was already written. He, he said the reason for which he was given a body was so that he can fulfill that which is written in the volume of the books. You may not have thought on that scripture very deeply, but what it means for a script to be written for you before you show up is that you, you are a slave. You cannot exercise your creativity. You only yield to existing protocol. 
So the book of, of Mark reveals Jesus as a slave. The difference between a servant and a slave is that a servant can choose another master, but a slave is bound to his master. The slave of God. He doesn't enjoy the luxury of doing what he wants. He's bound by government to accomplish that which was already written concerning him. The book of Luke is a book of the universal grace of God that shows us, in fact, the, the nickname for Jesus in the book of Luke is the Son of Man. Because his works will come from that dimension in this new season. Do you understand that? Okay, now that you got that, I want to explain the kingdom of the heavens. That's the dimension that Matthew saw. The dimension that Matthew saw entails the reign of heaven. That heaven was designed to reign over earth. Are you with me? Or you are not with me? Heaven was designed to regulate earth. Whereas you might find insufficiency on earth, there is sufficiency in heaven. And only men that know how to relate with the realities of heaven can find sufficiency in the administration of the Christ in spite of the measured possibilities that exist in time. There is a scripture in the book of Psalms that gives us a picture of what Matthew means by the phrase the kingdom of heaven. And that scripture is in the book of Psalms 115 verse 16. I'd like us to look at it uh, because the scripture unveils uh, issues of jurisdiction. Uh, it it, it uh, unveils issues of territorial integrity. It unveils issues of priesthood and permission. Is anybody there in the book of Psalms 115? Are you there? Can we read verse 16 together? One, two, go. So the scripture reads, the heaven, even the heavens, you will notice the plural there, that's the only scripture in the entire Bible that renders it the way it is rendered in the book of Matthew. The heaven, even the heavens. So there's a particular heaven he's talking about. Are you there? The particular heaven he's talking about is the third heaven where the government of God is established. He said that heaven is under God's control but by an act of a royal decree God has given the earth to the sons of men so we see jurisdiction in that scripture after this royal decree that God has made God it will be illegal for God to come into the earth without a human giving him access because God will be contravening his own laws his own utterances and the Bible says that he has exalted his word above all his name so if God speaks he, his words become law and he himself becomes subject to the things that he has said so by a royal decree God gave out the earth and said it will be man's place are you there? Okay. 
So we have two things now. Man is the warden of the earth. The heavens belong to God. But the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So how will the kingdom of God come into man's realm? You see, in establishing the kingdom of God, the reign of God, the influence of, of God upon the face of the earth, the role of man cannot be overemphasized because this is his realm. And the way God does it is that God, are you there? The entry point that God has into the human vessel is his spirit. That's the reason why God decided to operate from the spirit realm. It's, it's a risk. Because the book of John chapter 4 says, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And if God is spirit, it means he, he doesn't have a three-dimensional body. Are you there? And this realm is for three-dimensional entities. So it means for God allowing himself to be spirit, he has exempted himself from this physical realm. But the reason why he took that risk was because of man that he created. In God's wisdom, he created your spirit as a vessel. That is what he is going to wear. He's going to wear your spirit and then you will become the one that will take him around in your realm. The extent of God that comes out through your vessel is the degree to which you have, mani you have yielded to his authority. Because this kingdom we are talking about is going to be made manifest. This rule, this reign of God that is established in the heavens will be made manifest in your heart first. God conquers your heart and God begins to establish his reign in your heart. So he will reign in you first before he reigns through you. Are you there? So the Spirit of God now enters into your, your, your inner man. And then you are given to anger. The next time you operate in anger, the Spirit of God is grieved. And he registers his grief sufficiently well for you to know that he is not excited about that anger. If you are wise, are you there? Are you with me? If you are wise, you will know that what the Spirit of God is saying is that you don't know how to live. So you will repent from that anger. He's saying that this anger is not of me. This anger is not part of my nature. This is not how I operate. If you are wise, you will repent. You will make peace with him and ask him to help you. And then you gain an alignment again. Then the next day, someone comes and trusts Satan. Satan is going to generate another situation that requires a more terrible, a more pragmatic response. Are you there? Then you remember how he corrected you yesterday and you don't want to be in that situation of feeling his displeasure again. You say, no, I will not respond. It's better for me to be ashamed. So you begin to make effort to keep what you have with him. And all of this is happening where? Inside. You begin to make adjustments so that you can stay in alignment with him. You can stay. Then when the anger, the anger matter becomes settled, he now takes his searchlight and then shines on your finances. Say, what exactly is directing the way you spend money? 
then it starts there. And that's a, it's a very difficult. Normally for an average Christian, mm, in charge of your pocket. Flash it on the way you relate with people. Are you there? So one evening, under the anointing, you will now shout, shout on your wife. And because she's not a rebellious person, she may not shout back. And then you are now going. And he comes and says, Are you aware that she's my daughter? This is your shout. Go on. In order for us to discuss again, go and apologize. That's how you now discover how strong the flesh is. It will take you like 14 days. You... I'm telling you what happened to me. I'm telling you what happened to me. <laughs> you are preaching to other people about yielding to the Holy Ghost and then that situation just comes up just to show you that you, you are not yielded yourself. <laughs> Takes 14 days. And your presentation of the sorry was not even sorry. It was like... It was. He's insisting. He, he's insisting that he must reign. He must reign. Then when he begins to reign, he can use you as a law enforcement agent to take care of situations where Satan is reigning. Because you are aligned, you are under his government, you are under his rule, you are under his dominion, you become a vessel through whom he can express it. So there is a, a dimension in salvation. Thank God for that. Oh, you are not following me. But as you journey with God, he opens the gate to government. It's another dimension. And someone that gave his life to Christ yesterday may not even understand why your own life is like this. The person is enjoying salvation. Meanwhile, in government, he takes your hand and he begins to guide you to a place you don't want to go. You know, the motivational preacher said, go where you are celebrated. That's not Christian. That's a demonic statement. Because Jesus is going to lead you to places you are not willing to go. That's a proof that his government is established upon your life. He will send you to places where you can lose your life easily. If, if the depth of his government has been established over you, you will, you will obey him. You know, obedience to God will not come to you naturally. When you wake up in the morning, tomorrow morning, tell God, I want to obey you today. And walk out. You might fight before you come back home. Because the devil is going to set you up to violate your intentions. You will see how strong and how firmly established the flesh is in your life. That's when you will discover that one of the products of the fall is the flesh. And the objective of the flesh is that it wants to gain control of your life much more than the Holy Spirit. The flesh is saying, I couldn't stop you from getting born again, but I can stop you from submitting to the Holy Ghost. So when somebody slaps you, the flesh will tell you how to respond. That the people that watched you are 2,000. <laughs> you were on the stage, on the spotlight. 2,000 people saw that you were slapped. The only way to redeem your image is you slap, no, not just to slap, but you slap with, with your left, and then you. The flesh has a prescription for every circumstance. And if you are not, if you are not designing, you will think it is you that is making those suggestions. You don't know that it's a funny nature speaking out of your vessel, trying to convince you to be Adam. 
So the objective of the flesh is to see that the Holy Spirit doesn't gain dominance. Because the Holy Spirit is supposed to be the Lord that makes you access spiritual knowledge. He's the navigator within. The flesh doesn't want him to become Lord within. Another aspect of resistance to the government and self is an alternative God. Chapter 14, verse 12 to 14, was drawn from self. I will. It's a God that wants you to undermine the authority of Jesus Christ over your life. Whereas the flesh wants to, you to undermine the place of the Holy Spirit in your life because it's supposed to be Lord within you. Self is an alternative God that wants you to undermine Jesus so that he's not Lord over you. And the equation of the fallen man is self plus flesh equals old man. That's the equation. So Satan wants us to operate, even though you are born again, he wants you to operate after the order of the old man. So the Lord within you don't acknowledge his authority and the Lord over you, you are not in sync with his government. When that is the case, it means that you accepted salvation but you rejected the government of God. So that statement that Matthew made, the kingdom of the heavens, that kingdom of the heavens has not yet come to you. Because, are you there? When you give your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit will begin to give you perception of the emphasis of the kingdom of God, the reign of heaven over your life. The Holy Spirit will say, don't marry that sister. It will come like a thought, but it will be sustained. Don't marry that sister. And then you now tell the thought because you say something told you. But you don't know who is talking. You now tell the thought that, are you the one to tell me who to marry? The guy is born again, but he doesn't want to yield to the authority of the Holy Spirit. So in him, the reign of heaven has not found a footing. So he saved what is not useful to God because he still has the same rebellion as the fallen man. What the Lord said I should tell us today, the church in South Africa, is that we've accepted him for our lives. The entire landscape reflects the fact that he is not reigning. And if God is not reigning on earth, it means that his people are not yielded to him. His people do not recognize his authority within their hearts. His people are not loving of him enough to be willing to pay a price to serve his will. Are you still with me? So this, the flesh will be struggling. It is it, the flesh is struggling to ensure that the authority of the Spirit of God is not established over your life. Self is struggling so that the authority of Jesus will not be established over your life. And as long as that is the case, you will not have the authority, the endorsement of heaven. Heaven, heaven will look at you and what heaven will say about you is that the only thing he's good at is to rebel. So the hopes, the same government that has happened to you, to others, does not exist because you are a rebel. I'm not saying you are not saved. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying you have not allowed the reign of heaven. So if we go to the book of Matthew, the first message that was preached in the book of Matthew is repent for the kingdom of the heavens is at hand. Because when the perspective of the kingdom of heaven comes to repent, to accommodate it. Oh, you're not with me. In Lagos, because of the road traffic, situation 
People need to wake up by 5 a.m. to get to work. So most people do their morning devotion in the bus. You see somebody holding one pillar, doing like this. He's, he's trying to, to, to check the network. He's trying to connect. He's... Because if you are not strong, Johannesburg will, will shape you. If you are not strong, Pretoria will shape you. Pretoria will prescribe a lifestyle for you. And you will not, yes, you need courage, you need strength. You need to be stubborn to establish your own lifestyle. You need to be stubborn. If you are not strong, forget it. So you need to insist that I will do my three hours of prayer. Whether I like it or not, whether the office situation is conducive or not, I will find a way to do it until my body becomes used to it. So this guy was struggling to connect with Jesus in the bus. And um, he, he prayed to Jesus that I'm going to open my Bible randomly. Anyone that has spoken so he spoke some tongues, spoke some tongues. Those tongues that never went up. It was just still in his. He spoke something, spoke something, spoke something. And then he... Those were the days of hard copy Bible. Not, not, not these days. So he just... His eyes fell on... The rebuke John the Baptist gave to Herod. That he cannot have his brother Philip's wife. And thou shalt not have thy brother Philip's wife. He said hallelujah and he closed the Bible. That weekend, he had invited his relatives from the village because he was going to pay, what do you call it, Lobola? Lobola. Lobola. I will never forget that, that word. <laughs> so his guys came from the village, old men came with all the items. And when they got there, they met a scene. The scene they met was strange. The lady he was going to pay the Lobola for had a lover before that traveled to Germany, broke the law, and they jailed him. He was released from jail. The day, the day that he accessed that scripture, and his name was Philip. So when the traditional marriage was supposed to take place, the girl came and said, hey, wait. I don't like this man. This prisoner that they released has I have been in love with him. And the prisoner also came with his people. So the prisoner's people, the Lobola was accepted from the prisoner's people. And, and then he now called to him the sayings of the scripture. And thou shalt not have thy brother Philip's wife. You see, when the perspective of the kingdom of the heaven comes, you will need an effort. You will need to repent before you can take it up. The only thing we are good at is rebellion. But a man that wants to become a kingdom man must be willing to repent anytime he's confronted with a perspective that comes from the kingdom of the heavens. That's the first thing. There are 17 instructions that captures the holistic perspective of how we should respond to the kingdom of the heavens. The first is repent. You can keep struggling. 
as long as the kingdom of heaven has not spoken the moment the perspective of that realm is registered any other position you sustain is a let go of it why because the kingdom of heaven is what is at hand that's number one I'll give you number two. You studied the 15. Because we are not going back there tomorrow. Let me show you number two. Are you there in Matthew? You see people that have offended you. People that took your name to so many quarters and destroyed you. And then you get the feedback. You now say, okay, I'll never relate to this. The reason why it's like that is because my kingdom has not taken root in me. And part of your assignment is to bring him to that place where my government can influence him. That's how all men are without my government. The first challenge you will have is to unpack yourself of the, the hurt, the bitterness, the pain. The kingdom of heaven is so uncompromising that the fact that you are hurt doesn't mean God will change his mind. God does not change. You are the variable. So he confronts you with his own perspective. He confronts you with his own ideals. You will be the one to make the adjustment. And I tell you, I've made adjustments. I've made adjustments. I've made adjustments. And when you think we got it, he will tell you you lost it. So you keep making. The more aligned you are, the more of his glory that can flow through your vessel, the more people you can influence to come to where you are in the kingdom of God. The more people. The more people. God is looking for vessels that he can influence. Vessels that are pliable in his hands. They are, they are intelligent but yielded. They know the implication of repent. It's painful. But because it is the Lord that said it, they are willing to make the adjustment. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, as a roundup, Matthew chapter 5 verse 19, you search out 15 others. He gave us a perspective of how people that operate under the government of the heavens, how they operate. First perspective is that they repent anytime the kingdom of heaven brings their perspective. They repent. In the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 19, I will stop there. He said, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall become great in the kingdom of heaven. So in the kingdom of heaven there is ranking. And your rank will be determined by whether or not you do his commandments and teach them. Not just doing. You are your teaching ministry is coming, is 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 resulting from your obedience. He said, when you do that, you will be considered great in the kingdom of heaven. He said, whosoever therefore shall break the list of these commandments and teach men also to break it. 
Those ones will be what? So, you determine your rank. When I found that scripture, I began to extract every aspect of my life under the such light of the word of God to see how aligned I was on every matter whatsoever so that I can live right and teach people how to live right. Only men that the authority of God has been established in that they do the will of God that God can use to extend his influence to other hearts. So if in South Africa, for instance, we don't have believers that are willing to operate under the government of God, it means most people that teach in South Africa are not obedient to God. That's what it means. If you are accurate in your living, your teaching will become a, a tool that will influence other people to find where you are with God. That realm where you are, that dimension where you are will become available through your spoken ministry. The realities of that realm will travel with your spoken ministry. And many other people will be able to come into that place where you are. So your life will become the instrument through which God will influence other people just in case his government finds a place in your vessel. I choose to be of high rank in the kingdom of God. It's a choice I made. When you make that choice here, you back it with corresponding action. I want us to pray for 15 minutes. You don't need to stand up. As we pray for 15 minutes, the heavens will open. No, it's not an amen matter. If you are in alignment with God, he will hear your prayer. He will hear your prayer. When you pray to him, he will hear. If you are not in alignment with God, you will waste your time. But I still encourage you to pray even though you are not in alignment. He said, he that cometh to God, if you, if, you, if you make it to God's presence, he will look for how to reward you for coming. Mm, he's, he's, such, he's such a generous personality. But getting God on the scene, getting him to respond, the man praying matters. The man that is making that request matters. It will determine if God is interested or not. Because if you are interested in God, He'll be interested in you. Oh my God. Now, we want to pray a prayer. A quiet prayer. The prayer is easy. The prayer is simple. But it's powerful. The prayer is this. Lord, I yield myself. I yield myself to your spirit. Give me that strength such that whenever there is a contention between my flesh and your spirit. Let my flesh never win. Let the arguments that is coming from the flesh never be a reason why I will disobey your commandment for my life. I want to be great in the kingdom of heaven. Can we pray in a moment of time? I want to be great in the kingdom of heaven. I want to be great in the kingdom of heaven. I want to be great in the kingdom of heaven. I want to be great. There are things that God wants to do on the continent of Africa in this season. There are mighty things. And the Lord is looking for vessels. Looking for vessels. Vessels in the political scene, vessels in the business arena, vessels in the priesthood, vessels in ministry. There are so many opportunities, but God will not hand it out to someone whose loyalty to his government has not been tested. It's time for us to go deep 
deep. Oh, you are not praying. You are not praying. You are not praying. Let the flesh, the argument that the flesh presents never win. Never win. Never win. Never win. Ah, Lord help me, Lord help, Lord help us. I am seeing someone in the spirit. You used to enjoy very deep fellowship with God. Then you now got a promotion. You got a promotion on your job. And the devil preoccupied you with so much work that it began to affect your fellowship with God. You feel dry in your spirit. You feel dry. That warmth of glory that used to come upon you is becoming something that is of the past. Can you repent and say, Lord, Lord, that's why we came tonight so that we can gain further alignment we can align with your spirit we can align with what you are doing in this season we can align with what you are doing on the continent hey. Iso se kaboko rahala haita iso se la bendali Zobria la bosketo presko foto bina kesko sansale la ibromena siko pante la supria la baboke balantali esko brema santa baboko tabina antelia elia si there are dimensions of god that the life of a man that is obedient will trap down and any time people need those dimensions that we need to come to you because in you those dimensions have been trapped down god wants to make you and um, make you custodian custodian of dimensions in him of dimensions in him so that this world will begin to experience several aspects of god that is no longer common because those dimensions have been committed to you those dimensions have been committed to you. Now listen, 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 listen. There are three people in the congregation. And there is a work of restoration that is taking place on your life. I see a garment. I see a garment that you used to wear. That you lost. It's coming back. 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 It's coming back on your life. The veil must tear open tonight because God wants to commit dimensions. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. There is a fire. There is a fire I see coming from heaven. This fire comes upon... There's a lady. There's a lady in the congregation. This fire comes upon that lady. It comes upon that lady. There are dimensions. There are dimensions. There are dimensions that, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I see, I see, I see the weight of God and a yoke that is upon somebody that is beginning to break because of the presence of God. Lose her, lose her, lose her in the name of Jesus. Can you rise on your feet? Two more prayer points and I'll, I'll come down. God wants you to become custodian of certain dimensions in him. Certain dimensions. So that when you show up, those dimensions will be available. Because your life is aligned. God will be willing to unleash. Oh my God. Oh my God. I see the hand of the Lord. 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 
I see the hand of the Lord in the next Jesus. Lorena Sike Bambora Satalia Mesco Campeso Sela Brande Baboria Bale Moseke, Bale Moseke, Bale Mosantelia, Bale Momosicatali. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Seven people in this congregation. These seven people I speak about, they are intercessors and they have been interceding uh, in, in, in their hiding places, in their closets. And part of what God wants to do is to increase their authority in the place of intercession. In the next 21 seconds, the anointing will rest upon those people. In the next 21 seconds, 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 second. Holy Ghost! He opens up the curtain so that we can be ushered in. He opens it up. There's a promotion on you. Your rank has changed. Your rank has shifted. There's, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. The hand of Jesus is still upon you. Your rank has changed. Your rank has changed. There's an authority that he has brought you into as you pray. He will give you the authority to be able to change things in the realm of the spirit. You will change things. You will change things in the realm of the spirit. You will change things in the realm of the spirit. There's someone whose body is vibrating. Your body has been vibrating for the past 20 minutes. Your body has been vibrating. It's the angel of the Lord that has been sent to you sent to you for the past 21 days but you have not given God enough attention in order for those dimensions to come upon you and so God has found you tonight and that's why your body is vibrating yes yes there there, there oh my god there's a current there's a current there's a current of the spirit there's a current of the spirit there's a current of the spirit there's a current that is coming upon you it's a current it's a current of the holy ghost it's a it's a